Okay, hi. Hey, hi. Uh, 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 we are from, from one of the group, group uh, from okay. your Islamic Capital Market uh, class. So for this assignment, uh, we choose Islamic Quality Market in Malaysia topic. Before we start, we would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, myself, Irajan Rizati. I am Muhammad Shakir bin Muhammad Sharif. I am Nur Fariha binti Aminuddin. I am Raja Nurul Nadia. I am Fenwala Nasir Iqbal, Nas. Uh, and I am Nordayana Abdul Jalil. Okay, and then uh, for this assignment, we have choose Islamic Equity Market in Malaysia. So uh, let's project first our slide. Okay. Tanpa. Ah. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, let's start with the first topic for this uh, assignment. Ah, uh, the development of Islamic equity market in Malaysia. So, ah, uh, from our <coughs> findings, okay. Ah, uh, the emergence of Islamic capital market in Malaysia did uh, the first debate in the Malaysian uh, during the Malaysian economy in 1992. Okay, the, the two main reasons uh, of the introduction of this Islamic capital market in Malaysia is because of, first is uh, because of the 1997 Asian financial crisis where Malaysia is also impacted. And the next one is uh, the liquidity problem resulting from surplus funds from Islamic finance industry. Um, this is how actually uh, Islamic capital market in Malaysia is, <coughs> is started and uh, presently Malaysia is actually uh, fast surpasses other Muslim, Muslim countries in terms of market infrastructure with uh, unflagging support by the government providing the impetus for growth for the local ICM. <coughs> so uh, to compare, uh, 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 compare with Islamic capital market with conventional capital market uh, ICM is actually emphasized on carry out market transaction in ways that do not conflict with the concerns of Muslim and the religion of Islam. Uh, the Islamic capital market must comply with the five Sharia principles, where uh, which is which are prohibition of riba <coughs> or interest, uh, avoidance of garar or uncertainty, uh, prohibition of maizir gambling, uh, and if uh, is if it involves any application of unethical practice, also uh, practice also is prohibited. And involvement of prohibited elements such as liquor, pork, and tobacco. Okay, uh, under Islamic equity market, uh, we see, uh, I mean, these are the components. Uh, <clears throat> uh, firstly, stock. Stock would be the best component for equity market. And next is Islamic mutual funds. And then is Islamic ETF, which is Islamic Exchange Trade Fund, and uh, then is Islamic uh, REITS, which is Real Estate Investment Trust, and the, lastly is um, like Islamic Private Equity Funds or Islamic Structured Products. So these are the components under Islamic uh, Equity Market. Okay, so under Equity Market, there are those we call equity securities or known as shares or stocks. Okay, for equity securities, uh, meaning that um, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it mean this is the share that we purchase, uh, we we buy from uh, a company. Okay, but it doesn't mean that uh, when we uh, buy the share, uh, doesn't mean that we have uh, the shareholder the shareholder right to control over the daily business activities. And also, uh, as a shareholder, they are, I mean, uh, as a shareholder, there's no fixity of uh, return since the profit is based on the company profits and performance. And uh, under equity securities, the common the common one is um, uh, ordinary shares and preference shares. And also, uh, equity shares represent uh, an ownership interest and corporation or financial asset. And under Islamic equity markets, there are some conditions uh, whereby companies uh, will be classified as Sharia non-compliant securities 
if they are involved in financial services, they are practicing any elements that are prohibited under Sharia principles. Uh, when the companies are relatively related with activities comprising both permissible and non-permissible elements, I mean, is a mi mixture form of uh, practice. The Sharia Advisory Council, SAC, one of the <coughs> regulators, considered uh, two additional criteria that uh, I mean they will look look at, which are the company must be perceived well by the people, and the core activities of the company are very important, and should be should bring maslaha, which is benefit or general to the people, and uh, the non permissible elements must must be very small in proportion and very difficult to be avoided and if they uh, if the company only i mean have this kind of commission uh, we can consider it um uh, as uh, sharia compliant uh, and also the concept of masyarakat is applied during the assurance of shares by companies which to clarify that the investor who hold the shares of company actually uh, participate in the terms of up and down side of the company meaning that if let's say any um, i mean the, the investor doesn't involve only during uh, the profits i mean when the company get gain profit but also when the company having any losses okay and there are actually three uh, regulatory bodies in malaysia's uh, equity market which are first is security commission malaysia sc which is basically involved in regulation and development of capital market in Malaysia. Uh, and also, um, the investor can know, I mean, uh, can know more information about Sharia compliant companies uh, via SE, which basically will be published in the SE website. And the next uh, body is Sharia Advisory Council, SAC, which are responsible to ensure that uh, implementation of the Islamic capital market comply with the Sharia principles. Uh, it also acts as a reference for Islamic uh, capital issue. So anything, I mean, regarding uh, Sharia compliance for capital market can refer to SAC. And lastly, is Bursa Malaysia BM. Uh, it consists of complete range of innovative Islamic market product from derivatives, equities, and commodities across all sectors and industries, and comfortable to meet the tremendously increasing demands of Sharia compliant investment from both local and foreign investor. Okay, so we proceed with uh, next topic, the key issues in Islam equities. <clears throat> okay, so as for the issues in Islam equities, the points has been extracted from the articles of issues in Islam equities, a literature survey by Manso Masih Nazru K M Kamil and Obiatullah Bacha 2018, and we have used the Malaysia market to further elaborate on the real life example that has been happening ever since. <clears throat> So the first issue to be highlighted is the firms involved in the sectors like interest-based finance, conventional insurance, gambling, tobacco, and alcohol are not in the Islamic stock portfolio. So this is basically an issue here in Malaysia as majority of the business available here in Malaysia are non-Sharia compliant. And the rise of the halal economy are still slow as compared to the conventional ones. Although, there are awareness for the Muslims to change the preferences to the Sharia compliance services like choosing takafu instead of conventional insurance can be seen as progressing, but however, it cannot uh, attract all the interests of the non-Muslim Malaysian as there is a diversity in religion beliefs, thoughts and perceptions. In short, this serve, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Um, in short, this serves to be one of the main issues in Islamic equities in Malaysia as there is no proper awareness program for them to be educated, uh, accepted and to support the market by purchasing the stock. Um, gambling, tobacco and alcohol are also seen to be the ultimate source of entertainment for those who are not in favour of the Islamic teaching. So, uh, thus it cannot be... Um, denied that the stocks and equities are involving all the stated haram elements are more favorable by the investors as they are making a very good money from people who enjoys all the haram services as a source of entertainment so the necessity for them to promote the entertainment market are also requires less effort as compared to the introduction of sharia compliant market because um I have never seen uh, anyone promoting a hey, let's go to this particular club to have fun because you know uh, so moreover um, 
There is also a suggestion that the September 11 attacks could have produced a negative environment for Islamic investors. And there is a problem of Islamophobia, which is also an issue in Islamic equity. To be precise, we all know that the September 11 tra tragedy was a great kickstart of Islamophobia to emerge in many countries. This has led the Muslim minorities to live in fear due to them being discriminated, mocked and being boycotted by the public. That is not all. Um, together with the punishment received by the innocent Muslim individuals, the Islamic equity market too, too has got a price they have to pay as there is a potential misbelief of the potential by the potential investors that if they support the market by purchasing the Islamic equity, they are also supporting the violence to happen to in this world. And as we all know, that the statement is absolutely not relevant. But the impact of September 11 tragedy somehow impacted the growth of Islamic market and became an issue that can be elaborated. The next issue in Islamic equities is the calendar anomalies. So basically, as we all know, there is a special month of Ramadan whereby all the Muslims will focus more or entirely in the act of worshipping Allah and to commit themselves by fasting during that particular month. Also, with a long and strict customs constraint. Thus, this has led the investors to have the perception of an expected slowdown in market activity that could actually harm their um, investment. Um, this is because they do stick to the fact of the declining volumes of market transaction during Ramadan. However, they shall be properly Bialkowski uh, 2012 uses the event study on the cumulative abnormal return and the results were shocking. The stock returns during Ramadan are higher than in other 11 months in 11 Muslim countries. I'll pass to my next presenter, Ms. Fariha. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so I will be presenting on the uh, other three issues in Islamic equities um, and that would be uh, the standardized, standardization issue, uh, small diversity issue of Islamic equity and the last one is the complex screening issue. So for the first one, uh, before I go deep down on the standardization issue, I would like to emphasize on the role or purpose of the standardization. So standardization process is process where we uh, produce a standard guideline for let's say Islamic banking services to be followed for it to comply with Sharia. Uh, it is in need not only in Malaysia but also globally because there are quite a number of people who practice the Islamic finance However, uh, the standardization is hard to achieve because it is highly related to, uh, risk, to strict regulation, uh, school, different school of thoughts and practitioner belief. So in these three aspects, uh, it varies by geographical, po political values and as well as the beliefs of the believers. For example, some of Islamic countries accept the terms that is not acceptable in other Islamic countries due to the fact to the due to the fact of misconception and misunderstanding it is hard to achieve one standard guideline and not to forget um, on the conflict of fatwa which we have uh, a number of scholars in different parts of the world and with the fact that different banks offer different products making it even harder to standardize especially with the existence of different platforms but it but it, it is actually not impossible to achieve the standardization in one country for example in malaysia that uh, we have one uh, we have bnm to regulate the terms okay next uh, okay, the small diversity of uh, Islamic equity. Okay, some of the literatures, uh, they have actually quoted a question whether Islamic portfolios have a smaller investment diversity, which uh, in return will give this advantage in portfolio diversification. So, um, it, um, because of the because of the smaller portfolio diversification, uh, Islamic portfolios might show inferior risk adjusted return performance uh, when compared 
to the conventional one. Uh, lastly, uh, okay. um, the issue of the complexity of screening in Islamic finance uh, will eventually affect the Islamic equity market. Uh, this is when, um, despite the progress in the development, development of indices to testify Sharia compliance in a company, is the non-unification of Sharia screening that is not standard. So the question is whether the Sharia screening is really Sharia compliance or not because of the complexity of the Sharia screening. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, passing to the next presenter. Okay, so um, the Sharia Compliance Challenge in Islamic Equity Markets. Okay, before that, talking about the Sharia Compliance, as we know, um, Malaysia is remarkably one of the Islamic countries that has quite a stable Islamic equity market. Okay, and we have our own um, Sharia Advisory Council. So this ACC uh, task is to enhance the consistency in Sharia rulings, which is a major facilitation to our industry. And then as a SAC, uh, part of SAC, SAC, we also have uh, Bursa Malaysia Islamic, Bursa Malaysia I. Uh, Bursa Malaysia I also act, act as an Islamic windows for participating organizations to continuously engage with the equity investor. So, with the, uh, all the uh, SAC, uh, Bursa Malaysia I and other organization uh, that have as, have been established in Malaysia, we actually do not have to worry much about the Sharia matters because uh, they are the one who like uh, checking or screening about uh, all this uh, Sharia compliance or not. So despite all the issues faced in Islamic equities as presented uh, earlier, the Sharia compliance matters specifically has its own set of challenge in Islamic equity markets. Okay, so here are the challenge. First, lack of integration with the global financial system, and then differing interpretations of permissible transaction, and also the absence of uniform rules and regulations. And all these challenges actually uh, go hand in hand. Okay, for example, uh, a lack of integration with the global financial system. Okay, for instance, being a Sharia compliant, having um, Bursa Malaysia I is a wow factor. But people uh, always question, how far can we go? How institutional investor respond to this new platform? So having big numbers in Sharia trade volume and value, value concerning the non-Sharia trade actually would make this uh, Bursa Malaysia platform, Bursa Malaysia I platform to be more visible. Only with this move, uh, Malaysia can showcase the real depth of our Islamic equity market. Uh, adding on, Malaysia also uh, is predominantly a domestic market and denom denominated in Ringgit Malaysia, RM. So this has limited the interest from overseas investors. Compared to products from Middle East, uh, they mostly denominated in US dollar. Uh, so this we offer a broader appeal. Okay, next, another challenge that Islamic industry faces is lacks of consensus regarding the interpretation and application of Sharia principles. So this result in products and transactions that are valid in one country, but not another. For example, the controversial uh, by vitamin manager of contracts. So, uh, Malaysia have practiced these contracts, but other Muslim countries does not agree with this. And uh, there are also, there are even debates on how Islamic finance standard setting bodies struggle hard to formulate to formulate rules that apply globally. Uh, for instance, the debate highlights the struggle of Islamic companies and governments that are not bound by the regulation set by organizations uh, such as auditing or decision for Islamic financial institutions and also Kuala Lumpur uh, based Islamic financial service board. So all this challenge nonetheless has been recognized and Malaysia has um, has laid out uh, some plans to increase uh, cross-border collaboration, internationalize stock market, 
and also to further develop Sharia legal, regulatory and governance framework and help uh, its goal to become a global uh, Islamic financial hub. Uh, and hopefully uh, to bridge Islamic and conventional markets as a major step towards standardization of contracts and Sharia company rules, inshallah. Okay, uh, pass to uh, our next presenter. Thank you. Uh, and my friends. Uh, so, my friend, uh, myself, and Diana will be explaining on the role of Sharia screening methodologies to avoid non compliance risks. So, um, in order to understand um, how the screening process goes, first we have to understand the concept of Sharia compliance in ICM. I think my friends have covered that earlier, but I'll just touch on it a bit. And then, once we know what is Sharia compliance, then we'll look into what is Sharia non-compliant risk that is involved with the Islamic equity market. And then we also would like to touch a bit on the recognize, recognizing uh, Sharia governance bodies, institutes and Sharia standards that are set uh, locally and globally so that we can understand how they do the screening process. Next, um, so for the key concept of Sharia compliance in ICM, um, I mean, uh, Zati, can you turn the next slide? Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, so the key elements in ICM uh, is that the practice and operation and management of the investment companies and firms must confirm to the principles of Sharia, which is uh, uh, not involving any riba, garar, maisir, unethical practices uh, like nurse and also anything that is haram. So, uh, for example, interest riba. So we know that in uh, Al Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has also said that Allah has permitted trading and forbidden riba interest, which is very much common and seen in conventional uh, packages and conventional products. But that is what differentiates us from the uh, conventional ones, where we do not have the component of riba in our products and our services. And then there is also garar, uh, where is there is an asin uncertainty where there is something that is hidden it means something is not very clear not not uh, uh, when you represent something for which there is almost equal probability of getting or not getting so something is not clear there so there is uncertainty so we don't want that in our our sharia compliance and then if there is any um, issues of gambling or my or any activities which involve betting such as gambling speculative activities or game of chance or any unethical practices, like from an Islamic point of view, where honesty in dealing is highly emphasized, such practices involve different types of uh, deceptions are prohibited. So any type of uh, hidden uh, manipulation or any type of hoarding is not allowed in being a Sharia compliant product or service. And then clearly something that is prohibited or haram, uh, like disallowing investment in companies involved in the production or distribution of forbidden commodities, much uh, like uh, alcohol, pork, or pornography. Because when there are certain cases where there is mixed elements, then we'll have to look into uh, certain processes where we will try to see the maslaha issue uh, in, in that context. Okay, for the next slide. So these are the five things that we want to avoid. And if there's none of these, then it's Sharia compliant. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Sharia non-compliant risk. So risk is a condition in which there is a possibility of an adverse deviation from a diver, uh, from a desired outcome that is expected or hoped for. So Sharia non-compliant risk, or we call it in a short form as SNCR, falls under the operational risk under the umbrella of financial transaction. So under financial transaction, you have multiple types of risk. We have financial risk, we have operational risk, we have uh, business risk, and also other risks. But um, Sharia non-compliance risk or SNCR uh, falls under the operational risk, whereby when you operate, you might do something during the operations uh, that might not be compliant with all the five factors that we have mentioned earlier. Okay, next slide. So this is just re-emphasizing that uh, SNCR falls under the operational consideration and is relevant to ensure that operations are executed in adherence to the applicable Sharia rules and principle as per the fatwa policies procedures approved by the Sharia boards of the institution offering Islamic financial services. So it's a bank or it's any institution that has financial products, Islamic product, Islamic financial products. They have to comply with these uh, Sharia rules. So if you if you deviate from them, then there is a risk of Sharia non-compliance. 
Sharia non-compliance is also defined as the chance that an Islamic financial transaction is challenged on ground that it does not comply with the Islamic law. It is a risk of financial loss that an Islamic financial institution may experience as a result of non-complying in activities uh, with Sharia precepts as ascertained by the Sharia Supervisory Board, Board or the pertinent authorities in the relevant jurisdiction. A CNCR is also results can also result in a legal risk being the failure to comply with the contractual obligation and compliance risk, which is the risk of non-compliance with law and regulation. So if uh, you have promised the investors that you are going to comply with the Sharia and you're not doing uh, what is as per contract, then it is a legal risk for the uh, institution. Okay, next slide. So uh, managing SNCR or Sharia non-compliant risk is vital to the establishment of an effective Sharia government, governance system, Sharia to ensure that stakeholders have trust and confidence in the product offered and that they are informed of the Sharia compliant nature of the transactions. So like we say, we don't want any garar, we don't want any uncertainty in our product. We have to gain the trust of our investors. We have to they have to have confidence in us. So then there is a need of a Sharia governance body. Uh, so Sharia governance is a system through which Sharia non-compliant risk is assessed and it can consist of both internal and external bodies. So among relevant Sharia governance bodies, institutions, and even Sharia standards that are already set uh, locally and also globally, are uh, Sharia Advisory Council, like uh, which we have in Malaysia, the AAOIFI, Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, uh, Dow Jones Islamic Market, DJIM, MSCI Global Islamic Index, and also FTSE Sharia Global in Equity Index Series. I'll explain a bit on, on these uh, in a while. So uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, these are the bodies that we have mentioned earlier. So Sharia Advisory Council, uh, SAC, is established under the Security Council of Malaysia, uh, which further advises the regulator on Sharia matters and ensures that Sharia compliance, uh, the Sharia compliance of the Islamic capital market in Malaysia itself. So, in Malaysia, this is the uh, board that advises the Security Council, uh, Security Commission on the on whether this product is Sharia compliant or not. And you also have an um, international standard or international body, which is uh, Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institute, which is um, which was um, launched in 1991. It, it is based in Bahrain. Uh, it is an international non-profit organization, and its uh, main role is to develop and issue standards for Islamic capital market uh, or Islamic global finance industry. And they have actually produced up to 100 standards uh, involving uh, Sharia, involving accountancy, involving auditing, in, involving ethics and governance, etc. And uh, how we apply this in our product is uh, by being institutional institutional members of this organization. It means the central banks are actually members of this uh, institute and they will be guided on those standards. Uh, besides that, we also have uh, Dow Jones Islamic Market, DJIM, which is also, again, um, launched in 1991 and it's also based in Bahrain. It is a uh, world's first global Sharia compliant benchmark. So if you, uh, we have a lot of standards now, but that this one is the first global Sharia compliant benchmark that was set. And it uh, it helps to determine the elig eligibility of a certain index uh, and stock uh, to be screened to ensure that they meet with the standards set by the authorities. And then we also have this uh, MSCI Global Islamic Index. So MSCI stands for, um, MSCI is uh, the World Islamic Standard and it covers for uh, Sharia investment principles and is designed to measure the performance of the large and mid-cap segments of 23 developed markets, countries. Okay, so this 23 developed markets is actually the foreign, uh, the Western market. If we see the 23 uh, industries that, uh, I mean, countries that they have listed is actually Australia, uh, Austria, Belgium, Canada, uh, Denmark, US, UK, uh, Switzerland. So it's more of the Western, Western countries uh, that is actually using this standard uh, for their Sharia principles.
Then we also have another global equity index, which we can refer to, which is the FTSE Global Equity Sharia Index, which has been designed to be used as the basis of Sharia compliant investment products that meets the requirement of Islamic investor globally. So these are some of the standards. These are some of the governing bodies uh, which have been set locally and also globally. So how do they go about uh, doing the screening? Uh, my friend Diana will be explaining on that. Thank you. Right, I'll continue on the Sharia screening process. So uh, the Sharia regulatory body are all playing a very important role in ensuring the business, organization, or institution in equity market in Malaysia is not exposed to the non-Sharia compliance risk. So they are responsible on implementing screening process, which is the guidelines and guidance underpinning the Sharia assessment of stocks. Um, Screening process is designed to identify the element that violate the rules and guidelines of Sharia law, which which rooted from Al Quran and Al Sunnah. So this screening process usually take in the form of financial based screening and also business screening. Uh, next slide. All right. So. They are parameters based on the broad categories, which is the company's business lines and company finance. So. In the business screening, we are actually focusing on identifying if their core business is in the haram mix or the halal. And the company finance, we are looking into the interest income and interest paid. Uh, the next slide. So the business screening process, or, or sometimes known as a qualitative screen, or sectoral screen is being conducted to investigate the nature of the core business. It identifies whether one organization is involved in activities deemed by Sharia to be impermissible. So it focuses on the commercial activities of the business. Uh, so from the business screening process, it will determine if the business activities are halal, haram, or involved in a mix of halal and haram activities. So under uh, SC, financial service based on riba, gambling and gaming, manufacture or or sale of non-halal products or related products, conventional insurance, non-permissible entertainment activities, manufacture or sale to of tobacco-based product or related product, stock broking or share trading in Sharia non-compliant securities, or other activities deemed non-permissible according to commercial business will fall under non-Sharia compliant business. So if business involved in the activities considered Sharia non-compliance, then the Sharia investor is prohibited from investing in that kind of business so next slide All right so the difficulties arise when the business is running on both permissible and non-permissible activities in the business so the nature of this business usually has sharia compliant primary activities but one of a few the subsidiary activities may be Sharia non-compliant. So because of this, SAC has developed the level of tolerance as a guideline to permit investment in companies where only a small portion of the revenue is generated from the non-compliant activity. So at first we look at there is a 5% benchmark which is applied to assess the level of mixed contribution from the activities that clearly prohibited such as riba, gambling, liquor and pork. And then there, are, there is a 10% benchmark which is applied to assess the level of mixed contribution from the activities that involve element of umum balwa, which is a prohibited element affecting most people in diffi and difficult to avoid. So example is the contribution came from the interest income of fixed deposit in conventional banks. And the 20% benchmark is applied to assess the level of mixed contribution from mixed rental payment from Sharia non-compliant activities, such as the rental payment from permits that involve gambling and sale of liquors, uh, such as in the shopping malls. And the highest tolerance that we have, which is a 25% benchmark, is applied to assess the level of mixed contribution from the activities that are generally permissible according to Sharia and have an element of maslaha to the public. But there are other elements that may affect the share status of these activities. Uh, for example, hotel and resort operation and the share trading as these activities may also involve other activities that are deemed to be non-permissible according to Sharia. Um, okay, on top of this level of tolerance, the governance body also will continuously be monitoring and analyzing the nature of mixed business as changes of business may focus. Um, business focus may happen over time. So one business may venture into the non-sharia activities, especially when there is change in business portfolio or strategy. So the next type of screening is the financial screening. 
that focus on the financial activities of the business. So financial ratios or quantitative screen is being carried out to check the revenue of the company, whether they are free from prohibited income or they are involved in with it, but under acceptable ratio that has been permitted by the Sharia scholar. So in business environment, most comp companies cannot avoid borrowing from conventional financial companies to maintain enough liquidity for working capital purpose and resulted with the need to pay interest. So the situation creates sharing our concern in terms of riba element, excess and excessive risk. So due to the circumstances, financial screen methodology come up with number of ratios to safeguard investors from high leverage, poor fund management and payment of interest. So the ratios intend to measure two main aspects of the financial management of the company, which are in-depthness and interest income and cash receivable. Uh, next slide. So we adopt two-tier approach to the financial assessment, which applied to business activities benchmark and recently introduced financial uh, ratio. So the threshold for business activity is 5% and 20%. The other one is the uh, financial ratios that include the total debt divided by total asset is less than 3% and asset is less than 33%. Okay, so both business screen and financial screen are the methods used in Islamic equity market in the measure to ensure the business is not exposed to the Sharia non-compliant risk. So the disclosure of business activity, especially financial issues, is important in the screening process. So issues in regard to the screening process has become a challenge to the related bodies in their assessment towards, uh, thus it is vital that the two methods are being implemented thoroughly. So uh, that is all from us regarding the Islamic equity market in Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you, Dr.